It's good. Like, this is good. No, no, I would fly the shit else. out of it. I need to be able to charge right now. I know. I hope they make enough. Video. I almost don't even want to put the video out because everyone's going to buy it and then I won't be able to get any more. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> look at this sexy charge by canopy. Man. Wow. That's like, who made that shit? Yeah, I don't know. Open Racer. It's like a, HD it's Zero. The, the picture is very good. Like, I, it's, I was impressed. That's very nice. Now you can say this is HD. The HD Zero camera. V2. This is perhaps the most significant camera release. Now here is the already exceptional V1 camera. The lens is very, very close to the body. That means that it doesn't always fit so great in some of our mounts and to the rear is naked. And the biggest feature about the V1, which is really exceptional, this was a giant leap in image quality. Uh, next to something like the Digisite V2 right here, which was the previous, but it still had 16 by 9 only like all of the HD Zero cameras before it. This V2 finally has 4 by 3 Oh my goodness. It has a more traditional lens placement here, so it's more adaptable to mounts. And look at this, it actually has the components sunk in there and a true camera backing. So the rear components will be perfectly protected in a hard crash where everything gets jostled around that could knock one of these micro components off. No worries for that at all on this camera. And of course, four by three. Finally, racers rejoice. V2, I think it's way better. The vertical field of view is just, it's even better than the V1 with the run cam lens. With, with the run yeah, cam lens. It's yeah. even better vertical field of view than that. It's not quite as wide as the upgraded lens on the V1, but there's a lot less distortion. Like when you put that real big lens on that V1 camera, the outside, outer edges of it, you get all that warping and fisheye effect. So the first few cameras, it seemed like DJI was much better quality wise. I would say quality and field of view, it's really, really close. Really? I would almost I say it's, it's better than DJI 25. For sure. Because on the HD Zero system, when you get breakup, you just get those little specks. On DJI, right. when you get breakup, the 25 megabits just goes to blur. Like everything on the ground it is all, yeah, blurry. it's all just, you can't see any detail on the ground anymore. I feel like I could fly the same path with DJI and I would get no breakup or no hesitation. But the shark bite, I, I notice it's weaker to the side. And maybe that's just yeah. my stubbies that I'm using are not the best antennas. Yeah, for. I don't use, I use these on my goggles uh, now. Okay. These have made it way better. Uh, I notice like in front of myself, I'm good. But if I flew even 100 yards to the side, I was getting way more Yeah, to the up. side, I don't have any any kind of serious breakup anywhere other than here. Here, back there, it's just bad. You really need to have the best antenna for shark bite. True RC is going to come out with those patches for this pretty soon. And it's I'm like, actually using the same True RC singularity. Oh, okay, on, on the quad. quad. So antenna yeah. matters a lot for the HD Zero system. Now, we finally have the 4x3 that racers have been complaining about. So really, almost all of the pain points are gone. It's pretty much racing approved the only downside is you have to run sort of a larger frame like this or a larger pod like this in this open racer so this does still end up about 15 20 grams lighter than my analog quads but that's lighter than my dj quad by at least another 15 20 grams pretty good weight savings from dji it's just a lot bigger of a footprint though how many are they gonna have because we've had a lot of sourcing issues I know that's been making me nervous to race on it. I think you've been feeling the same thing is that yeah. we know if we crash it and we don't have a spare, that's it. Supposedly this V2 is gonna be in a bigger run than any of the other cameras. So we'll see if that actually pans out. Now, the nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about like DJI where you have a bunch of cameras that are like half the frame rate and real laggy. Every camera on HD Zero system is low latency. So it's like the image quality of the lens or the field of view is what you might complain about, but everything else is pretty much good. So and what I'm really the most worried about is not how it performs so much, but like, are these guys gonna be able to stick around? I know that HD Zero was actually buying and paying for the manufacturing for the HD Zero cameras. And we were a little concerned, like how long can they afford to fit the bill before these other companies jump in? But it looks like Fox here is willing to take that on for another round. Doesn't I think, sound I think. like Run Cam is yet. Maybe that's why they're doing a bigger run this time. Maybe Run Cam's chipping in a little Maybe bit on are. top of HD Zero. Because Ryan did say that they're gonna have a bigger run of cameras. What we really want to know is, are any of the VTX manufacturers jumping in? Because we know that you guys are chip manufacturers at HD Zero. 
not necessarily board manufacturers, and that's been kind of the bottleneck. They've taken it on themselves to just put their best effort forward, and they've actually done a pretty good job iterating quickly, but we still need something smaller. Companies like I, Immersion RC or TBS can really probably get that down to an actual 20 by 20 footprint and make it much more usable for everybody. And TBS and possibly Immersion RC might be feeling a little bit of that uh, Express LRS crunch as a lot of the com community jumps over to that open source stuff so you could rejuvenate the business by injecting some HD uh, video transmitters in there. For sure, yeah. So definitely. whoever gets to market first, is Rush gonna beat you guys out? We haven't heard from them in a while. Or maybe Skyzone will do it, so who knows. Orca says that they got three HD products coming out. It's speculated yeah, that one's that gonna be a HD module or, and maybe yeah. one's a VTX. That would be nice. I wonder if it's their own stuff where it's gonna be compatible with HD Zero. We'll see. Now, what are you going to accompany that with? Most of us are going to be using this 20 by 20 Race V2. It's still a little bit big, but it fits in almost any frame where you may be using the old Whoop board, which is also a substantially great value at only $50. I'm going to be building this up for my tiny trainer. I'm going to use the V1 because the 4x3 isn't as critical if you're going a little bit slower. Now, the main thing with a lot of this HD Zero gear is that it's just been hard to come by. I guess the popularity is rising. You don't want a situation where, like the DJI system, all of a sudden you had a few camera offerings like this Polar. The only cameras people really wanted to use were the OG DJI Cam or the Nebula Pro. We don't want that situation here, so it's good that we really have four very usable cameras. The V2 is the only one that can do 4x3, so I think that this one is going to be much more popular, especially among racers. Freestyle and micro crew won't care about this so much, so maybe they'll leave this camera for the racers, hopefully. Look, look what Derek cooked up. Tell, tell us about this, Derek. Well, I tried to rig up something that give us a little bit better penetration so for over the garage as well as some of the bushes that we have over here. Joe's running into a lot of trouble uh, having a lot of static and such. Ooh. And so I thought, just thought as an experiment, I might just like put my module out here, just see if it actually gets a better reach and such. Uh, but I also have the, uh, I also have the bite frost monitor. Ooh. So if anybody wants to watch the flight, they can actually watch the flight. And this is picking up its own receiver and such. You can actually take Did it and watch HDMI it. HDMI out from the monitor too? Uh, it does have an HDMI out. so. You could, if you wanted to run your goggles, you, you could run it off of that. The Bifrost itself is actually what was originally the a ground station right. for the Fat Shark uh, and system. It's totally compatible.
Robin Miller, or you just crashed in the well, same spot? I just decided to, you know, pick a little bit of leaves home. Yeah. <laughs> so that was just yeah. finish flying for this round. Yeah. Like that was enough. <laughs> yeah, because Neil saw him crashing and like, all right, Neil is like, I'm Thank done you. too. Yep, I win. Yeah. You might as well help with the landscaping. Yeah, you know, and just wanted to walk my boy to get his spot, so figured <laughs> I'd play my. So that's what kind of community we got around here. Yeah. That's sure. it. Just fucking. Just, oh, yeah, I'll go with you to get your quad, no problem. <laughs> <laughs>